Jesus didn't come to make Christians. He didn't. And the fact that we have so many professing Christians is a real problem. Welcome to The Bible in Life. My name is John Whitaker. And if you're looking for videos to help you grow in your faith, then be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to like this video and share this video so that more people can find it. And let me begin by asking you a question. What's a Christian? And I suppose you could get a number of answers to that question depending on who you ask, right? But in a nutshell, a Christian, we would say, in our culture at least, is somebody who they go to church, they believe in God, they believe the Bible. In general, that's probably how most people view a Christian. Now we could add more details to that, again, depending on who you're talking to. Maybe we would say there's somebody who believes in Jesus, there's somebody who has their sins forgiven and they're going to heaven when they die. And in and of itself, that last little bit, I think, illustrates part of our problem. And that problem is that we have focused on really just getting our sins forgiven and getting our ticket to heaven rather than actually listening to Jesus. And as I said at the outset, Nowhere does Jesus ever call anybody to be a Christian. He doesn't. Not ever. Not once. What does Jesus call people to be? Well, Jesus calls people to be disciples. In fact, the name Christian in the New Testament, that word shows up only a few times in the New Testament. The first time it shows up is in Acts chapter 13. And when it shows up in Acts 13, it's a nickname given to followers of Jesus by unbelievers. It's a nickname that means little Christ. That's the way the, the unbelievers viewed Christians. They were little Christ. They were like Jesus because they were disciples of Jesus. In fact, that's essentially what a disciple is. Listen to these words from Luke chapter 6. Luke 6 is Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has a crowd of people gathered around him, and he's got his newly appointed apostles on the front row. And he's giving them, really, his vision for God's kingdom, his vision for what he is launching and creating in and through himself and the work he's going to achieve ultimately on, on the cross and through his resurrection. And so in Luke 6, we get some really central teaching of Jesus. And in that context, in Luke chapter 6, towards the end, Jesus tells a little mini parable that illustrates what it means to be a disciple. Jesus says this, he also told them a parable, can a blind man lead a blind man? Well, they not both fall into a pit. And so Jesus asks a rhetorical question that expects a certain answer. Can a blind man lead a blind man? The answer is, well, of course not. Why not? Well, because they won't see where they're going. Won't they both fall into a pit? And then Jesus says this in verse 40. He says, a student is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Now, one of the things to make sure we, we get right off the bat is when Jesus says a student is not above his teacher, the word translated student is mathetes in Greek, and mathetes is the word for disciple. So we're talking about a disciple. We're talking about a relationship between a disciple and his teacher, a disciple and his rabbi. And Jesus just assumes the way that works because of the way everyone in his culture knew it worked. What was the nature of the disciple-teacher relationship? Well, Jesus says here that a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, that is every disciple, when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. Because that's the way it worked in Jesus' day. In Jesus' day, uh, students didn't just go to school to know what the teacher knew. They went to school to become like their teacher. Very different than in our culture. In our cultural context, when a student goes to school, what do we picture? When you picture a student and you picture a classroom, what do you see? My guess is you see a room full of desks or tables and you see rows and rows of students at those desks and those students are feverishly listening to the teacher teach and they're writing down notes, right? They're taking notes and writing them down 
um, either on paper or typing them in their computer and they're taking notes. Why? Because they've got to get the notes down so they can study the notes so when the teacher gives a test, they can pass the test. And the whole goal of our educational system is simply to learn the information so you can pass the test, so you can get a degree, and you can be done with school. The goal is to know what the teacher knows. But in Jesus' day, the goal of being a disciple to a rabbi was not just to know what the rabbi knew, it was to become what the rabbi was. It was to become like the rabbi. And that's why Jesus just says, everyone, when he's fully trained, will be like his teacher. It's just an assumption. It's just the way it worked. It's what everyone knew about the way discipleship worked in Jesus' day. And the goal of being a disciple is to become like the teacher. Now, Jesus called people to be disciples. He didn't call them to be Christians, right? Like, you can be a Christian, and you can go to church, you can serve in the church, you can give to the church, you can be considered an active Christian, and only be a little bit like Jesus, if at all, right? But you're a good Christian. But Jesus never called anybody to be a Christian. Jesus called everybody to be disciples. And in fact, Jesus called disciples to make disciples. He said at the end of his ministry, Matthew 28, before he uh, went back into heaven, Jesus said, go and make disciples. That's his call to us. Our job as churches and as Christians is to make disciples. That's what Jesus wants. He doesn't want Christians who just go to church, believe the right things, right? Profess the right things. He wants disciples because disciples are learning how to be like their teacher. And Jesus called us as his followers not to be a Christian, but to be a disciple who is becoming like him. Jesus is our rabbi, we are his disciple, and the end game he's after is for us to become like him. A disciple, catch this, this is terribly important, a disciple is someone who has chosen to be with Jesus in order to become like Jesus. That's what Jesus is calling you to be, that's what Jesus is calling you to do.